Hello there, it's Jay here from Jay's Vintage Junk, and uh, today I thought we'd have a quick look at this. Now, uh, what we've got here is my um, Peak Atlas um, LCR meter. It's an in um, ductance, capacitance, and resistance uh, test meter. Now, <laughs> what happened basically? Uh, the capacitors that I ordered for the Dragon 32 um, repair have uh, finally arrived. A uh, bit of a nightmare with that, but um, I won't go into that in this video, I'll leave that to the Dragon video. But anyway, they finally arrived. And I thought, um, as part of the video, I'd actually test some of the brand new capacitors and some of the old capacitors. And I'd use a couple of um, test meters to do it. So I've dug out this thing, which, although it's in a nice box and everything, is one of them really, really cheap, like £5 Chinese um, component analyzers that does transistors resistors, capacitors, um, it doesn't do inductors. This, on the other hand, I have owned since I was probably 19 or 20 years old, so I've owned this quite a long time. Uh, this is in a slightly different um, league. Um, like I say, it doesn't do transistors, they actually had a separate um, little unit like this, I think it was blue, that did um, semiconductors, it did um, diodes, um, transistors, FETs, things like that. But like I said, I didn't buy that. I um, got the capacitance and inductance um, tester. And it was quite expensive. I think in... Oh God, uh, like I said, it would have been around about... 98, I possibly bought this. Um, 98, 99, around that kind of time. Um, I think I paid about £150 for it. Um, actually, the um, transistor testing version of this was a damn sight cheaper. It was about seventy-nine pounds, but uh, so the um, LCR meter was very expensive. It is a top-rate piece of equipment, I will say that, and it's made locally to me. It's made actually in um, the High Peak, uh, which is quite close to me. So I, I like, you know, it's British made and it is British manufactured. But um, I come today to um, test some of these capacitors for the um, job and it was completely dead. I uh, tried powering it up and it was completely dead. And I thought, oh well, the usual things happen. These use one of these tiny little batteries here. It's basically, it's the same battery as you find in a lot of um, car uh, garage door openers and um, things like that. It's actually a little 12 volt, um, like sub double A kind of size battery. And what happens with um, these meters is because there's no actual on-off switch, you just press the button like that to switch them on and off. In your pocket and in your tool bag and things like that, the button gets pressed every now and again, and eventually it just wears the battery down. And I was presuming that's what had happened, and I'd got a spare battery for it, so I uh, put a nice brand new 12-volt um, battery, a little Panasonic one there. And it's definitely the 12 volt one, because they do a 1.5 volt, which is virtually identical. But this is the 12 volt version. And I put a new battery in it. And it was just at that point, I was just about to test it before I put it back in the case. I noticed there's a... I've actually cleaned it off, but there was a little bit of corrosion around the uh, power switch there. Which I thought was quite odd, being that I can't see that the battery has actually leaked at all. But um, there was definitely some um, corrosion around that switch there and with the, even with the new battery in it when you press it on it does absolutely nothing I tried squirting a little bit of switch cleaner into the switch I got my uh, I got my old um, switch cleaner and I give the switch a little uh, a little squirt like that just to see if it um, was just bad contacts but look still nothing so what I did next is I got a um, I got a component leg I just tried bypassing the switch. Now, do it on that side and nothing happens. But if we uh, try shorting out this side of the switch, if we look, it fires up and starts doing its analysation. So, we have a bad little um, switch there. Now, what I found, and hopefully these are going to work, is I didn't have ex any of these little surface mount um, switches. I do actually, let's just have a, uh, have a quick look. I just thought I might have a different, slightly different size type of switch that might work for this. Let's have a, have a look on here. Uh, they're about the same. Yeah, I think these are about the same as well. So 
So what we've got is um, basically I've got some scrap here now that's got these type of switches on it. These ones are surface mount and these aren't. But what I think we're going to do is uh, try. Yeah, with the way that that's set up there, I don't think it's going to be too critical. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, try taking one of these little switches off here and replacing the switch. I think I'm going to use uh, these ones actually. We're going to try taking one of these off here um, and making it into a um, surface mount. We'll cut the legs off and bend them round and we'll see if we can replace that uh, dodgy switch on there with one of these. I'm not sure whether it's going to work or not but it's, uh, it's better than having a uh, a broken piece of equipment. Like I said, I was planning on using this to make a uh, make a video. So let's see what we can do. Let's see if we can suck off. Just move that out of the way for now, and we'll see if we can salvage one of these uh, switches. This is just off an old um, either an LCD TV or a monitor, which I've uh, stripped down. I never just chuck them in the bin. Things like that. They've always got useful little bits. They have some useful little speakers in them. Which always come in um, handy for things, and um, they have things like these switches and these little tack switches are always handy to keep in your spares box. Or like I do, I just generally pull the board that's got things like this on it off and throw that in a junk box. And then when you need a, uh, a little switch for a repair, you know you've got something you can probably pinch one off. Just one off. Two. There we go, let's see if we can get that little switch out of there. There's my pliers. We'll just give them legs a little uh, little free off on that side like that. There we go. Let's see if we can pull that switch out. I have to be a little bit careful, they are quite delicate these switches. Let's have a look there, that's the one that we've released. That's coming up, there we go, it's up on that side. Give it a little whittle. There we go, it's nearly out. Oh, I just have to just do that. Oh, yeah, I just need to slightly heat it. There's one pad there, it's not quite a release, but if we hold on to it. Wait, wait, there we go, that's the switch out. So we've got a new, uh, a new switch there, or at least a replacement switch. And what we need to do is flatten these legs down because that's mounted surface mount style as where this obviously has been used through hole but all we need to do is just bend the legs out both sides should really be using pliers for this but I've misplaced my little pliers but that'll do just as well and push that right down because we do want it so it mounts nice and flat on the board no good if it's sticking up too much. Let's see, we've got something else we can put. Ah, that'll do. Just use them to flatten them legs. Nice and flat like that. That's better. Same on this side. We'll just trim them off so they resemble little surface mount legs like that. And we'll snip them off the same. There we go. So that's the new uh, the new switch prepared. It's nice and clicky. And we will get the old switch off here. Now we could use hot air to do this with, but we can just do it. Um, if we're careful with the old uh, with the old soldering iron, and what we will do is basically we'll heat the two legs up on this side together. When they're both molten, we'll lift it up, and then we'll move on to the other side. So what we will do, I'll just take the battery out. I mean, it's not going to blow up or anything, but it's just it's good practice. So what we will do is we will heat up the legs on this side.
and hopefully this this should release. It's coming. It's coming. Okay, that's up on that side. It's still attached, but it's up. We'll move over onto this side. We'll heat this side up. The horrible smell coming off this, I will say. Really horrible smell coming off this. I don't know where this has got uh, left at some point. There we go, and that's off. So that's the old, uh, the old switch removed. I'm just going to get a little bit of uh, PCB and flux cleaner on that. And we'll have a go at cleaning up that area. Ooh. I've lost the uh, lid to this, so I have to pinch it off my uh, pinch it off my switch cleaner. I'll just give uh, the board a little spray on like that, and give it a little clean off. And there are some horrible, nasty deposits on there. I don't know where they've come from, but hopefully they will clean off easily, which they have. The next thing we need to do is we just need to clean off that old solder that was there. And for that we're just going to use a little bit of a solder wick. And what I will do, I will add a little bit of extra flux to this. It always, um, always uh, prefer to just add a little bit of flux to my um, solder braid. It really does help. Even if it has got flux already in it, which uh, most of the better ones do, it's always um, it's always better just to add a little bit more. It really does help it uh, help it mop the old solder up. And we don't know whether this is um, going to be that horrible lead-free stuff or not, so we want to get it off there. And there we go. We've got the pads are nice and clean again. Because we have our nice new uh, we have our nice new switch there. I mean, I say new, we have our nice um, salvaged switch there. We can put that in position. Make sure it's going to actually line up, which I think it will do. Yes, that's going to line up okay. The new legs, obviously, because they aren't really sold, they aren't really um, designed for uh, surface mount, are a little bit bigger than the old ones, but it's not going to matter. They're still going to touch where they're meant to touch, so that's all that's really important. So what we will do, and this is the tricky bit, is just getting this thing um, actually lined up. We will just solder one leg first. Just get a little bit of solder on there. Like that. And then we can, oops. Just, now it's tinned up, we can just hold it and just tack it down on that corner. Like that. And there, as we can see, the switch is in place. It's uh, it's reasonably well lined up. It's not perfect, but it should be close enough for the button it's actually got to press on. So uh, we can go ahead then and just solder it down in position. Now this is another of the things where it would be nice if you had an extra hand, but if you haven't, then you can do it easy enough. Just. I'm just using my finger just to hold the switch down as I actually solder that. Just to make sure I get a good contact. That's in position now, then you can go around the other ones and just, just solder them in. That's again. There we go, that one's okay. And here we have the, uh, the final one. And then the other side really just anchoring it down, it's this side that's actually the important. Oops, we've got a little bit too much solder on there. We'll just muck a little bit of that off with some uh, solder braid. There we go. Yeah, it's not the neatest of jobs in the world, but it should be uh, serviceable. There we go. So we will put the battery back in and we will see whether it's now functioning. So that's the battery back in, if we press the button now, there we go, that's, uh, that is working, 
and hopefully it will go back in its case. So let's see if we can get this back in its um, its case. Now it's got its new switch on it. 